Allison Hayward and I'm on the faculty of the George Mason School of Law. Today I'd like to talk about districting. As it stands now, states send their Congress members to Washington, D.C. from particular districts. But you know, that wasn't always the case. In fact, for many years, some states sent members of Congress that were elected at large to Washington. What that means is you would have a statewide election for that member or members of Congress. Now the problems with that large districting are plain. If there's a bare majority in the state, chances are that majority will control the entire delegation rather than just a fraction. So if you had a registration split of 55% one party and 45% the other, you would end up with an entire delegation representing the 55% majority and the 45% minority being shut out. This isn't just a partisan problem, it was a problem for a long time with shutting out minority interests who were interested in getting more involved in politics. Now if you think about it, when do you think this practice ceased? 1850? 1920? Maybe 1950? We'll try 1971. Surprised? Yes, we think of districted congressional races as an established part of our system. And with good reason. Something about an at-large election just seems unfair. Now presently, petitions are circulating in California to change the way that state allocates its presidential elector votes. Instead of awarding all 55 electoral votes to the candidate who wins the popular election in California, 53 of the 55 would be allocated based on who wins the congressional district in that election. Now guess what? The minority party in California is behind this proposal. But so what? That's always the case any time an at-large districting plan is under attack. But reflect for a second. How is it that districts are such a good thing for Congress, but not such a good thing when, it, when applied to presidential electors? How is it that this plan is, and I read now from the New York Times, a sneaky initiative that would rig elections when applied to California presidential electors? It's not surprising that folks primarily interested in electing Democrats to Congress would oppose this initiative. But what is surprising is their inability to muster anything like an argument for their position. Name-calling just won't cut it. Look, if the people of California, acting in their legislative capacity, as the, is their right under the California Constitution, want to change the way they allocate presidential electors, then let them. If voters in the Central Valley or in the foothills are tired of being disenfranchised by urban electors, let them make their case. See what happens. That's not sneaky. That's direct democracy.